Hey guys, welcome back to the Future Channel on YouTube. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the brand new released Samsung S7 and the S7 Edge. Not much has changed in terms of looks from last year's models, but instead Samsung took what it got in terms of accolades for a great design last year and made it even better. The S7 and the S7 Edge are still made up of a glass body and metal frame, but the improvement is a rounded corners and the curved back which makes both devices very pleasant to hold in your hand. The S7 comes in with a 5.1 inch display, while the S7 Edge has a 5.5 inch curved display with Super AMOLED Quad HD screens that offer users a super immersive experience. Button placements have not changed. We have the power button on the right and the volume rocker on the left with a micro USB port on the bottom along with a speaker grill, microphone and headphone jack similar to last year's S6. It was a bit disappointing that we didn't see the new USB type C instead of the regular micro USB but that's not really a deal breaker. There is some good news for all you file hoarders. The S7 has a SIM card tray with a slot for an SD card which was sorely missed in last year's S6 and users can now upgrade the device's external storage up to 200 gigabytes. And for all you adventure enthusiasts out there who love swimming, water sports and using your phone while you're in the shower, the S7 has an IP68 rating which means it's water and dust resistant. As for power, Samsung has used a 3000mAh battery on the S7 and the 3600mAh battery on the S7 Edge which should make a difference in how long it lasts through the day but I guess only time will tell. Either way, the S7 and the S7 Edge support fast charging as well as wireless charging so power hungry users will be able to charge their devices much quicker and on the go. The S7 and the S7 Edge have really good cameras with Samsung claiming better performance in low light and better autofocus capabilities. Both devices have 12 megapixel shooters and feature dual pixel technology. This means lesser megapixels but larger pixels that should theoretically give you better photographs considering the type of sensors and lenses Samsung has used. Double pressing on the home button still opens up the camera in a flash so that is something that users will still appreciate. The front camera has a white flash that should result in better looking selfies but we aren't too convinced about that entirely. The S7 offers a pleasing user experience and Samsung's TouchWiz interface does not disappoint. It is fluid, responsive and does not have the usual bloatware that we are used to seeing on Samsung devices of the past. This is a review handset but we're pretty sure that all devices will have the Android Marshmallow OS out of the box. The processors on the device may vary so depending on where you buy them, they could come with either a quad-core Snapdragon 820 processor or an Exynos octa-core processor. The good news is both devices come with a whopping 4GB of RAM making them some of the fastest Android smartphones out there. So with that we wrap up our review of the Samsung S7 and the S7 Edge devices. We hope you enjoyed our review today on our channel. Do follow us on our social media channels like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe, leave a comment below and see you in our next video.